Justin, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so it's much for meeting us here today. To be here. So we're here at Icon Shop, and um, we're going to be chatting to Justin a little bit uh, about the Amblers and all the exciting stuff that's coming up. And there's something cool happening on Friday, so we're really excited about that. But first of all, we're going to go a little bit into depth. I have to know this, Justin Swart. Who the hell are you? Where do you come from? <laughs> What has been your journey up to this point where you're sitting here with us today and with the Amblers? Tell us oh. a bit more. Well, I don't know how long you want, you want this interview to be, but just uh, um, it's such a tough question that because where do you begin? I mean, there's so many things that make up that road, but I think if I had to simplify it, you know, in order to give um, the most broad but accurate picture, sure. I grew up in the Cape, I grew up there. Um, I struggled a lot with drug addiction um, as a kid um, and I've been in the music industry for a long time but I mean it never it was always difficult to build momentum with those things sure. because I was constantly in and out of rehab and and that kind of thing and you know when I was in my early 20s I kind of eventually got my life sorted out and things started to take on a little bit mm. more energy then in terms of just being able to work hard at something yeah. because I mean I think a lot of a lot of a lot of young people think that these kind of things ha happen overnight mm. and, and they never ever do. They take years and years of hard work yeah. and most of that hard work no one ever sees. Mm -hmm. I mean it's not a public, it's not in public view. So my story is very very similar sure. to that. But I mean yeah. I come from a very musical family. Um, my grandfather was in like a famous Buddha orchestra which is pretty nice. cool. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. one of the only music like styles in the world you really struggle to find the beat yeah. you, know? <laughs> you know so you, you just get kind of got to go but my grandfather was really musical my dad was really musical I picked up a guitar at a really young age obviously getting better at a guitar also took a while just yeah. because of my own personal things you know and, and just getting focused and growing up and being disciplined on those things and that was really it I mean at the end of the day I think of music is something that that really grabs you from because everyone loves music but I think you've got those that um, want to play it and those that just want to enjoy it and I think from a playing kind of perspective you know picked up an instrument early learnt it as fast as best as what I could you know it just got better and better I think you also develop your, your kind of your own feel and your own style as you get older um, but in a really broad nutshell I don't know if I've either hit it or missed your you question it. completely you but it. it's kind of you know very similar to everybody else. I mean, yeah. South Africa's music industry is really small, so it's mm. it's good to it's good to it's it's good not to be a doer. Yes. Yeah. If, Don't if be that, a doer. Yes. If exactly. that makes any sense, because <laughs> you know what, every it's it's quite a small, tight music mm. industry, and you know it's good to have friends. No one no one gets anywhere on their own, sure. and, and you know my story has been very very similar yeah. to that. And you'd also agree, possibly in my brain, it's. Um, for me to have an organic growth like that is something that sets you up more, um, enables you more to succeed in the music industry, if I can put it this way, instead of just having to push it, like learn guitar the one day, put a band together the next day, get a label, get all that stuff together. Absolutely. So it sets you up in the long run, I think, that organic growing process like you've gone through. Well, it definitely did for me. Um, I mean, I, to think, I think that, you know, in my early 20s, I think like with any young person, what's really important is being popular and being famous mm -hmm. and and you can get really lost in yeah. that because i think that anything that's worth building comes at at, at a sacrifice of something mm -hmm. you've got to work hard at it mm -hmm. and i think if your motives aren't authentic and true and real sure. i think some people get it right sure um i didn't mm -hmm. if you, you know it, it uh, i really really struggled so i think that that process of that slower process yeah. for me allowing me to grow up, sort out my substance abuse and all yeah. that kind of stuff, it really did help me to enjoy it more. Because I think that, you know, when you're kind of just trying to be popular or just trying to be something, um, it's never enough. Yeah. You, you, you know, there's no confidence in that really unless there's something wrong with you and you're able, or right with you, and you're able to really manufacture 
some kind of incredibly fake confidence sure. that kind of everyone buys. Yeah. But most people don't. You know, I think yeah. most people aren't stupid. They can see right through you and that lack of like authenticity people sure. pick it up quickly it doesn't matter how talented you are and i think that's such good advice as well for young musicians and people who are trying to you know pick up a guitar for the first time in their lives at a younger age that is such brilliant advice for sure. them as well thank you tell me quickly uh the name of your very first band that you ever were in very first garage band whatever I, it was I in your it mind was, band i think it was called plastic sandwich <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a high school band. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and we, we never we never played one show. Uh, we fought a lot yeah. in like a garage. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a lot of politics, that's you know, awesome. like a high school band. Yeah. And I think we only played like the chord progression of like Smells Like <laughs> Teen Spirit ever. <laughs> like, over like you and over. know, yeah, it never went anywhere. But I think it was called Plastic Sandwich. Was there anyone who stole anyone's girlfriend in that band? Otherwise, it would never have been. No, complete. not that I not. remember. <laughs> and the age, the age, there was such difference in, in age. Oh, I mean, really? I think my first band, I was in like grade six. I didn't do too well in high school mm. either. I studied after high school, sure. but I mean, I had such problems yeah, it was with just, drug addiction that yeah. I eventually left and I, yeah. I studied out of school and I had to kind of put my education sure. together outside of like yeah, the yeah. formal thing. But I mean, for the two years that I was in formal high school, it yeah. was a dog show. <laughs> it really was. That's amazing. Uh, let's quickly chat about your partner in crime, Mr. Jason Hinch, right? So the from absent man. The absent man. Sure, but Where is this he'll be angry man? with me for saying that. <laughs> it's fine. It's but he's absent similar, for right? good reasons. I cool. think you know, Jason Hinch is. Jason is so in demand, and he's so sure. good at what he does, and yeah. he's so. Um, and he deserves that, of you course, know, at the yeah. end of the day. And when we started, when we started the Amblers together, because we, we knew each other, we've known each other for a long time. Okay. And I mean, when he was playing for the Bones, you know, we'd kind of, as I've said in, in, in previous interviews, because the story yeah. is the story. The story is yeah, the story. Um, you know, we'd run into each other. And sure. you know, you often find bands on the same ball and, and stuff like that. It is yeah. a small industry. Mm. And that's how Jason and I kind of got to know each other. And when we, we started to do the Amblers stuff together, we weren't aiming at anything specific sure. um, we really just wanted to get together and make the music that w that we enjoy making I sure. mean Jason is an incredible blues rock drummer he's just he's just got it mm -hmm. and uh, and that's kind of where it started we, yeah. we didn't have any big expectations or big plans and luckily for us we feel great very grateful for the fact that uh, People enjoyed what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. So g coming back to a two-piece thing, I mean, that is the ultimate challenge, I think, to create a full band sound, but with two artists alone. So what kind of triggered that thing with you guys to say, listen, it's just going to be the two of us. We're not going to get a bassist involved. We're not going to get another guitarist involved. It's not going to be a nine-piece thing. What was kind of the the thing for, for that? For me personally. It's difficult to get a lot of musicians together yeah. and have them be consistent in one kind of story. And mm -hmm. I'm not criticizing anyone, no. I'm just saying it's tough. True. You know, yeah. people's lives get into the things and for us, we didn't really, I mean, we never considered more people. Yeah. And, and, and that's what's made the music easier for us because mm -hmm. there's only ever been us. So sure. um, if it doesn't sound good with two people, mm -hmm. that, that idea is dropped very quickly. Sure. So it's not like we try and make it work we mm -hmm. just seem to happen to flow on what does sound good with just the two yeah. of us or not you know if we were if we were more members in the band i don't know if we would be here with who i am and who sure. he is and how busy i yeah, mean yeah, yeah. you know I, I also think that you know the amblers right now because jason is is Bork's main drummer and yes. tours like a mad a man, man yeah. you know i'm quite sure that if there was someone else mm. a bassist for example also just committed putting in that person might, for example, be frustrated with the fact that, you know, we've got to work around lots of other schedules, True. who knows? So for me, that's a very strong element of it for, for, mm. for me. Yeah. Um, we, we can do it, mm. if that makes sense. You it's can, just the absolutely. two of us and we can do it, you and, can do and, it. and that works you for us. You don't need anyone else, mm -hmm. that's brilliant. I think it's very daunting though, but sure. well done, you guys have done it so yeah, well. Yeah, strangely enough, very, we very haven't good. felt daunted yeah. by it. Um, but I suppose we had it in our heads sure. to do that from the beginning. From the start. Yeah. So we haven't felt like we're lacking in Sure. Um, just, I'm going to just go back a little bit to Jason one last yeah, time and then I we'll move on. Yeah, I kind of hijacked that, Jason. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't Sorry, mean Jason. To. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to say from what I saw, um, the little bit that I've seen of Jason on stage and what I've read and, and listened to, um, 
he he seems like a very humble little Pretoria boyki, you know, and and you can affiliate with him on that level because he feels like a very real person. How would you describe Jason as your partner? He's, in an, this ama he's an amazing human being, and he is just that. I mean, he is super talented. Mm. Now, for someone who who has played with, you know, Jason plays in excess of 200 shows a year. I mean, that's close to like Joe Black, who I think is, yeah. you know, kind of. The, the busiest yeah, South sure. African musician at the moment. Mm. I know those things change, but mm. I mean, it gives you a, a, a kind of a sense of perspective. Yeah. And for someone who who plays with so many top artists in our mm. country, sitting and having a chat with him, he's just Jason. Yeah. You would never, you know. And so it's easy. It's yeah. easy to have a relationship with Jason. It's yeah. easy to get along with him because he's yeah. just Jason. It's just Jason. It's funny, you know. And at the end of the day, he's he's. He's a rock, not just musically in the band, but I mean, he's he, he's a he's a good friend and he's a good man, cool. uh, and that makes it easy to make good music Absolutely. with someone like that. You know, a Absolutely. lot of the riffraff is yeah. it doesn't have to be dealt with. Exactly, yeah. you can just be creative. Sure, just let it flow. There's no it egos or yeah. anything like that That's coming amazing. into it. And I mean, the other thing about Jason, which I think is 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 really really cool because you don't see it that often, is he's very very upfront. So if he doesn't like an idea. He, he's not worried too much because he's not coming from a critical place. Sure. He's very open to just saying, I, I don't like that. Mm. And you don't feel attacked by <laughs> no. it, if you know what I mean. Because yeah. he's not trying to one up anybody. Yeah, he's yeah. just saying, listen, that's super cool, but yeah. I don't like that. Nice. You know, and it makes it easy to collaborate with him. Absolutely. And then, I mean, the Amblers. I've got to ask you, where did you guys come up with that name? What happened? How? What led to that thing? Well, the Amblers really is just indicative of I suppose with we don't like to give too much of our thought process and, sure. not, and not because not because we're trying to protect it That's but cool. because it's important for us that people derive their own meaning from what we're doing we don't mm. we don't too much like to tell people you know why we wrote that song and what was the point of it sure. and what was the message of course we've got our own message we're expressing yeah. ourselves but yeah. we also like people to try and determine for themselves that yeah. thing in their lives if it reaches them Beautiful. and yeah. so if I have to get into it the ambulance really is just it's just about sojourning, traveling, you know, cool. ambling along, doing what you can, doing what you must, trying to get the very best out of every moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's really, in a nutshell, yeah. it's that. That's beautiful. I think a lot of people know a lot of stuff about you and a lot of stuff about Jason. And even if Jason kills you or hangs you when you go back and see him again. But is there anything you can tell us about yourself and maybe something about Jason that no one knows, like something very interesting? I don't know about myself, I mean there's so much. <laughs> that um, no one knows. I, and I think uh, be, because of my, because of my, I don't want to use the word battle, because of my sure. journey with drug addiction, sure. I, I think I'm a lot more open mm -hmm. than a lot of people are, you know, I'm just, I don't have anything to hide. But yeah. I think that's one thing I haven't spoken about a lot sure. and that I talk about more lately, you know, yeah. it's something that for some reason it comes up. Yeah. Um, so. I'd use that one. It, it is something cool. that a lot of people don't know about me. Yeah. I'm trying to think of one for Jason. One that'll upset him. Something that's weird. Like, does he sleep with socks on? I don't know. Does he do weird know. stuff that no one um, knows about? Pick his nose behind the drum set or weird stuff? No. No. <laughs> he uses Pantene. Oh, really? <laughs> no. no. Yeah, because he's got amazing no, hair, right? Our, so our, our nickname for him is, is Pantene. Oh, really? Um, he doesn't like it much. Okay. No. Jason, um, it's out there, dude. I'm yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> but he does have he's amazing hair. He's got amazing hair, hair so I thank mean, you, Pantene. Um, maybe something that I could also share is Jason takes like video shoots and music videos and photo shoots like super serious, more oh, wow. serious than most people. Okay. And he, he becomes like this totally other person like, like character. yeah 100 cool. percent and um the way he flicks that hair yeah, yeah, in, yeah. when it gets, when it starts it's Pantene, to get bro. serious like it's amazing <laughs> it's really really interesting that's incredible okay let's carry on yes, to the music I'm side sorry. of things no it's awesome that's am that's amazing i'm he sorry i'm saying sorry to jason i <laughs> know oh, don't, don't worry jason we'll be fine so let's quickly have a chat about the ep um i believe you guys launched that last year hey yeah so we the, uh, the, the first ep released sure. in 2017 okay. they released we released the full album in 2018. Cool, yeah, yeah. And we are releasing, we, we're releasing the first single of the new EP on Friday. Excellent. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So tell us, what are we looking at? What are we? The new, the new, the new EP, okay. the new track, um, releasing so on Friday. So just to call it what it is, 
we aren't really sure yet. I mean, okay. at the end of the day, we've got a lot of songs that we're working on. We've started. We we don't want to leave people hanging too long, sure. so we don't really right now have mm -hmm. an exact date of okay. when that EP is going to be released. Sure. But it will be soon. It will be within the first half, at the very most, of next year. Cool. But we do want to start to get some key, you know, cool tracks. Mm. Not all of them, but out now. Yeah. Um, and we've been working on it. So you know, we we we've tracked the first set of drums at High Seas, which is great. Working with Jock uh, and Gavin, um, you know guys that really just know what they're doing mm. uh, obviously with, with the amblers our, our drum sound is just such an important element and we've always worked really really hard on making sure that that is super full I think some people might think it's too much mm -hmm. but um, you know it really has become like the bedrock of what we do so you know working with high seas on that has been really really good awesome. I mean their their knowledge in the recording phase of stuff mm. is just so so good um, and yeah, we're excited to, to you know start to release this body of work sure. for people to pick apart. So what apart. is the track that's going to be released on Friday? Uh, what is the name of that track? It's called Birds and the Bees. Birds and the Bees. Yes, okay, cool. Nice. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, what can we expect? Is it going to be like really uh, blues, rock, grungy kind of vintage sound? Or is it going to be more mellow? I don't actually know. I mean, I don't know if, if the way I would describe it is the way oh, someone else would cool. receive it. So sure. okay. um, I think the Telltale stuff from the Amblers is, is in it. Mm. Um, everything is single takes. Sure. So that's wow. something we've done from the beginning. I do nice. want to clarify though that when, when we mean single takes, we don't mean Jason and I together with the vocals, sure. everything in one shot. What yeah. we do mean though is that the guitars is one take, the vocals is one take, the drums is one take. Amazing. And why we've done that is because we like it to be a solid moment mm -hmm. in our lives. We don't like chopped up moments of the very best, Love although it. we could do that and I think it is standard practice. We just want it to be something that we can recognize of it as, a, as something that we get, that was the best we could do in that moment sure. on that day and, and that's it. That's so it's, it's the same as that, mm -hmm. no samples, we don't use any samples. Um, it's definitely got that vintage sound. I mean, that's definitely part of, of, of who we are and what we do. Um, you know, we make a, a use of a lot of outboard gear in, mm -hmm. in, in the recording and the mixing phase. I'm, I'm not a gear or a tech fundi, really. Um, my, my partner in crime, Mr. Damien Kruger, who normally speaks to the guitarists um, on the tech side of things. Sure. Um, I know he'd just love to know this answer on the question that I'm going to yeah. ask you. So um, I know that you're using a prototype kind of uh, pedal, sure. like fuzz sound. Yeah. So I wanted to know if you can tell us a little bit more about that and how does it actually work, the prototype part? Did you build this yourself? Is it someone that's built it for you? Sure. Unfortunately, I did not build it myself. Okay. It was built by Benjamin Craig, okay. who is he's quite a well-known pedal builder um, in South Africa. Very, very talented mm -hmm. uh, individual. He owns a company called Craig Amps. Nice. And um, he built the pr he built the prototype, and sure. it really is like a very, very aggressive gated fuzz with different modulation mm -hmm. elements. I mean. Um, it's tough to work with sometimes because it, it, the range is so massive yeah. uh, between what you can do, between you know what frequencies you allow to cut off, where you allow them to cut off, how the fuzz works, how it relates to the other thing. So that's difficult to explain and to be quite honest, I didn't even know the exact science of it either in terms of the circuitry. Sure, yeah. But I mean, it's it's got filters, it's got a tune filter, mm. it's got a frequency filter, uh, it's got different fuzz filters. and. And in one way or another, on all of our songs, I use, or thus far, yeah. have used that pedal in, it's not the only fuzz pedal mm -hmm. I have, because it is quite harsh, it sure. can be quite harsh yeah. and very, very thick and intense. So I think from the beginning of a song to the end of a song, it can, I think, become a little tiring, mm -hmm. um, and you can fatigue from it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we definitely use it in, in elements in different places where we think it will have the most effect. But it's a super cool and super yeah. frustrating pedal. I can imagine. Because <laughs> Um, it also responds, it responds differently to how you play. Okay. So, um, you know, if you've set it one way for one song, mm -hmm. it works perfectly. If you want to go to another song no. and you're playing the song differently, yeah. you know, with your hands, yeah, yeah. it doesn't respond the, the same, same way, way and it's got to be tweaked. So, it, it really is a piece of art in itself. In itself. Yes. And is it like one source? There's no other pedal I like hope that, that it is. I, I, I know when I got it, it was completely a one, prototype. Yeah. And, um, I mean, my box, I, I have the, I have the, the kind of um, 
the labels written on with like a black oh, wow. marker because it's just a silver <laughs> just box, the box. With, with dials. Yeah. So all of the things are written on. That's awesome. Um, he did say that he wanted to put it into production. I don't sure. know if he has or, or yeah, hasn't. Yeah. At least I've got the very, very yeah, first, first one. one yeah. But I do think with something like that, um, I don't think it's the kind of unit that will ever sell yeah. lots because Mass. I think it's so so, unique so, specific, so specific. You know, yeah. only certain people are going to like to use it yeah. and not be intimidated by the fact that it's it doesn't just do one thing, which sure. a lot of people like, even yeah. means certain things. Absolutely. I'm going to give you three words. I'm going to give you a first word, and you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready for that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> dirty. I think of of a guitar amp, like a dirty guitar amp. That's <laughs> nice. The, yeah, like an old, vintage, busted up guitar amp that uh, is too expensive for me to own because that's the crazy, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, yeah, that's I the first that. thing I think. That's yeah, brilliant. Broken, dirty guitar amp. Okay, EDM. <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say doof doof. <laughs> um, EDM, I, I think of young people. I think of young people that might be missing a lot of analog stuff. Cool, that's yeah. a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, doof, last doof one. Cool. I love doof doof. Last one. Jack White. Oh, I think of so many things when I think of Jack White. I love Jack White, and it's not, it's not. But now I see, now I'm going to give you the whole story when you... When, I love it. Like, yeah, okay. So if that's okay. That's great. I just, Go. It's the philosophy. It's his way sure. of doing things that I love. Um, okay. You know, I think he, he... For me, he's more of a whole package than just some musician. You know, I think he's probably a really difficult person to work with. And mm. I think that that's just how it is. But I find him to be very inspiring with just a whole lot of other stuff. His mm. general view on, you know, protecting the heritage of music um, and not just American music because I think it really started there I mean sure. that's really where the recording industry began it's where a lot of the innovation and stuff began and I think you know his 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 attitude towards those kinds of things mm -hmm. um, is really really cool everything is so inclusive and um, yeah I find him very very inspiring Stunning. I, I absolutely agree um, so the last question is, I don't know if you still got a CD player in your car or if you just plug in or USB or connect or whatever you do, but what is the, the ultimate album or ultimate tracks that you are listening to right now, artists? Um, <laughs> I've been listening to the new Desert Sessions, which is Josh Hom oh, wow. that's come out and, and uh, I've been kind of gouging on that a little bit nice. and, and what, what's cool about it is um, the Desert Sessions is a really, it's, it's actually, there many volumes have come out over like the last decade. Mm. But why they started doing it was because they really felt that the music industry and their labels and stuff were limiting them. So they would get as many musicians as wanted to go. Mm. And they would go out into the desert and there would be no limit. Oh, wow. um, I think some of the, the stuff was, you know, you've got to play an instrument that you don't usually play. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've got to do something new, something that you're unfamiliar with. And the desert sessions are the recordings of what, what was produced from sure. that. So that's been really cool. Mm. The new desert sessions is, is really cool. I got a little bit of Eagles of Death Metal smashing nice. at the moment. Cool. I found a, someone put me on a, a, a pretty cool band. I don't know too much about them. Yep. They're called Lily, yeah. but L double I L Y. Okay. Pretty, pretty cool. I've been enjoying that. What else have I been listening to? I listen to a lot of classical music. Serious? I've been listening to a bit of Guy Battery. Wow. And okay. lately, so I've got a very, very broad, Wide. yeah, like nice. taste in listening to music. Sure. Yeah. That's amazing. Justin, it's been such an honor speaking to you. Thank and you. I think that um, I'm very grateful for the depth of this interview that you gave us today because I know and I do appreciate and understand that some things need to be your own and um, and I really love the fact that you guys your main initiative is to leave it up to the listeners and to allow people to make their own connections that is just beautiful that's ethical music for me um, it's been thank such you. a pleasure thank you so much thank you so much Thanks, So I think my style of playing guitar is really, I mean, very bluesy. Um, I like like a lot of staccato kind of stuff, very picky, very harsh, very um, kind of in your face. Um, and it's, it's really as simple as that. I mean, I, um, I'm not too worried about scales and theory. Um, 
more worried about um, how things sound, how they work together. Um, and it's really just a, a feel thing for me than anything else. I mean, it's as simple as that.